guys, hope you're all having a good day. Today I wanted to talk about eating out because that is one thing that you guys have addressed time and time again in the comments that you struggle with. I've been doing a little bit of writing, I've got my book right here, so if I can looking down that's why because I've made a lot of different notes to make sure I can stay on point in the video. I've written everything also in a blog post if you want to refer to that after this video. I've also made a PDF file with the information in as well. So for those of you with smartphones, when you're out and about, you can just have this on your phone. I do this with my Tone It Up nutrition plan um, and the various different bits of the Tone It Up plan. I'm not sure about other devices, but I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. I know you're smart cookies. On an iPhone, the iBooks application reads PDF files. So if you transfer this or email it to yourself, do whatever you need to do, get it on your iPhone. And when you go to iBooks, it will be there for you in a nice PDF and you can view it when you're out on the go. If you have no internet, anything like that, you're on the tube, on the train and someone asks you to go for a meal, you can refer to it and have it on the go. So that's there for you guys as well and I hope you find that helpful and I'll try and do that in future if I do any more videos like this as well if you guys like that feature. So before I go into the different cuisines, because I've kind of delved into different types of restaurants as well in a little bit more detail, I have some general restaurant advice. Now a lot of you might be thinking, oh you know, you can't deny yourself everything, you have to eat out, you have to live your life. I totally agree, but if you've never tried to lose weight and you've never been in that mindset where I really want to achieve this and I'm destined, you know, I'm determined to lose weight, um, you might not understand how it feels. And for those of you out there who have tried to lose weight or are currently trying to lose weight, it can feel like, oh no, I don't want to go for that meal, I don't want to do that, I don't want to do that because I'm doing so well. And it's not that you're like frightened of going for a meal and it's not that you don't want to socialise and do those things, but you've set your mind to something and you're kind of going on this path towards it and you feel like there are obstacles being thrown in your way that might make it more difficult. It's natural when you've got your heart set on something to panic a little bit, but it's not healthy to panic. It's not healthy to kind of worry too much about what's in it. You just have to guide yourself in the best way possible and still stay on track. Food is a part of life and it's a social part of life and it's a nice part of life. So hiding yourself away in your house and saying, no, I'm on a diet or no, I'm trying to be healthy, is not going to cut it, you know? You want to be in a position where you're still functioning as a human being and you can go at the drop of a hat for a meal with your friends and not worry about it because life is way too short, life is far too important and it's totally not worth letting that disrupt your happiness and your well-being and food should be something to be enjoyed. So my first piece of advice for you is not to starve yourself before you're going out for a meal and I've been guilty of this in the past. I know a lot of you guys probably have done this before as well where you think, I'm trying to be healthy, I'm trying to lose weight and I know I'm going out for pizza, Indian, Chinese, whatever later and I'm going to probably be eating a lot and so I'm going to save myself, save myself, that's the phrase that people use, I'm going to save myself for the Indian. This is the worst thing that you can possibly do. Firstly because your blood sugar will drop so low and your body will be like what the heck are you doing to me that it won't react the same way to the food as it would if your blood sugar had been kept stable and you've been eating regularly throughout the day. The body's going to grab onto that food like it's no tomorrow because it didn't know when the heck its next meal was going to be. So you need to make sure that you're feeding your body regularly throughout the day. Not eating throughout the day is not the answer. And secondly, if you do that, when you get to the restaurant, you'll just be like, you know that emoticon with the hearts in its eyes? That's what you'll be like. You'll get to the restaurant, you'll see everything and you'll want it all and you will eat it all. Now, I know that if you know that you're going to be eating more calories than you typically would on a healthy eating plan when you go out somewhere. You just want to restrict your calories in the day and I get that but you still need to eat proper meals and snacks as well you know just, just keep yourself going. Um, eat just lighten everything up so for example on a regular day I have oatmeal for breakfast with um, almond milk and I have to throw some fruit in there but if I knew I was going to be probably eating a lot later or eating a lot for lunch going out whenever I was going out I would have something like fruit with Greek yogurt and a little bit of honey on there so it's just a lighter option um, or maybe just having some fruit, having a smoothie for breakfast, anything like that, you know just make a lighter version but don't skip the meal completely. Then you can still have your mid morning snack, some fruit and then for your lunch maybe, maybe switch up what you would usually have if you usually have like a sandwich, a wrap, a jacket potato, whatever you would usually have, have like soup or a salad, something like that so just lighten it up, don't go heavy on the bread and still have a another mid-afternoon snack, some nuts, seeds, fruit, whatever you want to have, but don't deny yourself the whole day because it's just a recipe for disaster. Next thing, if you've got time, do an extra workout and that way you don't need to feel so bad about it, you don't need to worry about it so much and you're earning extra calories. Think about your body like this, like um, a scale. You're going to be eating more, just do a bit more exercise to even it 
it out. Your body is like a car and it needs fuel and you need to make sure that you've got the levels just right. If you put too much oil in a car, it's not going to work properly. If you put too little in, it's not going to work properly. So just make sure your levels are the same, you know. It's not necessarily about justifying things because I don't feel like you should have to justify everything. If you want to go for a meal, you go for a meal, but it's just about restoring that balance. So it doesn't have to happen with everything that you eat. I'm not saying that every meal you have should be justified by exercise. That isn't a healthy way to look at it either, but just, you know, even if you can't do it that day, you know, do it the next day, or if you're going to the gym in a few days time, then, you know, maybe do an extra class or do an extra half an hour in the gym or something, just so you know that you've taken responsibility for your well-being that week. My next tip is something to keep you social in a restaurant. So if you are going to a restaurant, the last thing that you want is to be that person that's like chatting to the waitress, waiter and being like, can you tell me what's in this? Can you tell me what's in that? And you know, asking loads of questions and studying the menu and everyone's ready to order and they're all having a conversation about their work, their kids, their weekend, their holiday, what a nice day it is outside, or if you're celebrating someone's birthday, you know, they're all chatting about that and having a good time and you are just preoccupied with this menu and it's really antisocial and it makes you feel like an idiot so you might end up changing and just being like oh whatever I'll just have it. Be prepared if you know that the restaurant that you're going to has a website I'm going out for a meal tonight I'm going to an Indian restaurant I found the website I've chosen what I want roughly um you don't have to choose exactly what you're going to have you know it doesn't have to be like military precision but just go there with a, a rough idea of what they offer what might be the better options to go for and then you can just choose your meal like everyone else at that table in you know a couple of minutes without Bus. If you can't find the website for the restaurant then use the rest of the tips in my PDF and the rest of this video to just have a rough idea in your mind before you go. The next thing kind of contradicts what I've just said, well it doesn't but ask questions okay so if you need to ask a question like what is in the food do it ask the waitress don't be afraid to ask something but just don't spend the whole time so preoccupied with the menu and what you should be having and what you shouldn't be having that you lose track of why you're there in the first place okay so in terms of the actual food you know it's really up to you you guys know what is best for you but personally I like to choose either a starter and a main or a main and a dessert when I go out just because I don't like that feeling of being so full that I can't move um, and I usually leave a restaurant feeling like that if I do all three um, unless you know you can share a starter with someone you know if you share a starter with your partner or share a a few starters amongst the table and get to try different things. Another tip that I would have for you is to only order your dessert after you've eaten your main meal. So a lot of restaurants will come, especially if it's a set menu, they'll come over and they'll say, you know, what do you want for your starter, your main and your dessert? And honestly, like I've been in situations like that and you're you're starving, you're ready to eat, everything looks tasty, you order your dessert and then when the meal's finished and they bring the dessert out you're just so full from your main meal that if they'd asked you then you would never have ordered one. Another thing to bear in mind is to prioritise. So you need to prioritise between food or drink. Um, personally I'm not a big drinker, like I drink occasionally, I, I, I don't not drink. I'm not really that bothered though about having beer with my meal or wine with my meal. I'd prefer to eat my calories but everybody's different. Some people could not imagine a curry without a pint of beer or a Mexican without a beer, although I do like um, a cocktail or a beer with a Mexican, but you know, there are some foods that you just have these associations with and it just wouldn't be as enjoyable for you otherwise, and I get that. Again, it's all about the balance. So for me, I would rather drink sparkling water with a little bit of lime or lemon in or something like that and have more or have a side dish that's basically my choice but you guys make that choice for yourself even if you decide to have an alcoholic drink I'd always encourage asking for a jug of water or some sparkling water um, just to make sure that your body knows whether it's hungry or thirsty and again it just will keep you hydrated if you are drinking alcohol to be honest alcohol is not the best thing if you're trying to lose weight like it doesn't really promote fat loss and things like that so it's probably not the best thing to go for if you are serious about losing weight and you need to do it you know you need to be on track then I would try and stay away from the alcohol if you can. Another tip is to always get a side dish of a salad to share or for yourself or a side portion of vegetables no matter what kind of restaurant you're in. Um, if you get just a plain salad with the dressing on the side or just some like vinegar on it or something then you're gonna find that you'll eat less of the bad stuff and most restaurant portions let's face it especially in America wow like when I've been to America like those portions are big. Psychologically we tell ourselves well if it wasn't a healthy amount to eat they wouldn't have given me this much 
it's not a healthy amount to eat, it's not the amount that you would eat at home. So when you go to a restaurant and you get these huge portions, you know, if you get a side salad and you eat it, then don't be ashamed or afraid. There's this, especially in England, there's this weird thing. I, so many of my friends like don't like to ask for a doggy bag or ask to take it home and I don't care, I'm just like, yeah, I'll take it home and I'll have it for lunch tomorrow or something. So just balance it with like salad and greens and then you will make sure you don't eat monster portions that are not designed for non-monsters. And in general avoid like fried stuff, go for like baked, grilled, but I think that's pretty much common sense. Okay so now I've got the general advice out of the way, first of all I'm going to talk about Indian food so that's what I'm going to be having tonight. First of all poppadoms, so poppadoms can be quite high in calories, they're not, they're not that bad, you know if you want a poppadom have a poppadom, but with the dips and things, you know try and limit yourself to one um, and try and go for the dips that have like the onions, you know you get like the raw onions in spices, go for those kinds of things because they're going to be, they're like bulky and they're tasty, they're so good um, and then you'll find that you'll eat less of the chutney style sugary kind of dips and um, yeah the yogurty ones are not too bad, have a lot of the onions and you'll find you won't eat as much of the bad dips. But the big thing about Indian food is the sauce. The sauce can hide a multitude of um, butters, creams, milks, all kinds of things. A lot of Indian food is cooked using ghee which is like um, an Indian, it's a type of butter type thing. Um, I always ask for it without the ghee um, just because it makes it a little bit lighter and less less heavy, less calorific um, and I've never had a problem with anyone that said no to that. My first tip though is to go for the drier type of food. So tonight when we go to the Indian I'm going to be having paneer tikka which is like, paneer is like an Indian cheese but it doesn't really taste cheese, it's more like tofu really. Um, and I'm going to be having that in like a spicy coating and it's like char grilled and it's got peppers and onions but it's dry so you know what you're getting with it, you know there's not really much in there apart from the oil they might have char grilled it with, there's not much in there that you're not going to be able to account for but you could go for chicken or something like that or prawns then I'm going to go for a vegetable side dish instead of getting rice or something like that so I'm going to go with um, something, I don't know, I don't know, I've not really decided yet, but maybe like spinach or aubergine or some chickpeas. Chickpeas probably is going to be what I'll go for because they'll be really filling and full of fibre and protein and really, really tasty. You get a vegetable side dish as well, they tend to have like a bit of sauce but not much, so you can kind of use that if you do get some rice as well. If you do opt for rice, then always go for like the, the plain, like either the pilau which is just like the boiled basmati rice, avoid the fried rices and go for more plain rices um, and if you are going to get a sauce then go for something which is tomato based. Also avoid the naan breads, the, the bhajis, you know just have a little bit of naan bread if you really need to have some but if there's going to be two of you and there's going to be a huge naan bread in front of you you don't really need to eat that much bread in one go so maybe you just stick to naan breads when you're sharing them amongst quite a few people I don't know it's all up to you guys but those are my tips okay so moving on to Chinese food um, personally I always go for tofu at a Chinese restaurant because that's usually um, my favourite thing to get and obviously I'm vegetarian but if I was to recommend something for you guys I would go for things that are stir fried so I'd always go for the stir fried options if you're going to get noodles go for the whole wheat ones but maybe get some kind of chicken stir fry with lots of veggies, avoid things like prawn crackers, spring rolls and crispy seaweed because they are like fried and if you're gonna go for like noodles or rice go for boiled rice and go for whole wheat noodles and or brown rice if they offer it and you, you'd be surprised that once it's in with the sauce how much you'll enjoy it. Always get a side portion of stir fried vegetables, mix it in, you could probably separate one meal into two, the, the portions are generally quite big when you get a takeaway aren't they so or you're in a restaurant so you could maybe share a whole portion of stir fried vegetables with your boyfriend, your friend, whoever and have a chicken dish between you and then some boiled rice so get like a few things and share them and that way it'll be better. Okay next up is Italian and I think Italian is one of the difficult ones because it's so easy to go to an Italian restaurant and have like cheesy garlic bread to start and then have a pizza after it and then tiramisu. Um, it's very easy to overdo it at an Italian but there are also a lot of healthy fresh flavours that are so tasty so it's not the most difficult one to 
make better if that makes sense. So for starters I'd always go for something like a tomato soup, avoid the creamier soups but maybe like a tomato soup or as long as it's not like tomato and cream, cream of tomato you know what I mean, go for like a actual like tomato soup and a vegetable soup something like that but personally I would always go for the antipasti so I'd order some olives, maybe a salad like mozzarella and tomato, artichokes and dried tomatoes, all those kinds of things you know if they don't have an antipasti platter which most places do um, if they don't then why not order um, like a salad you know basil tomato mozzarella and a bit of olives and start off with that and share it with someone step away from the garlic bread for pasta dishes obviously avoid creamy pasta dishes and go for more tomato based ones if it's a restaurant that offers whole wheat pasta even better personally I always opt for pizza because I love pizza I do tend to find that Italian pizzas tend to be crispier so that's not usually a problem but if there is a choice then always go for the crispier base, the thinner base. Pizza Express and places like that are really good because they have those pizzas with the salad in the middle where it's just around the outside, the pizza, and those are really, really nice and those are a great option. But if you go to a more traditional Italian restaurant and they don't have those options, then my recommendation would be to load up on vegetables. So rather than having things like salami and things like that on the top of your pizza, I would load up on vegetables. Peppers, onions, mushrooms, um, artichokes, even pineapple, whatever you want to throw on that pizza, like order a pizza with a lot of vegetables on it. And you can always ask the waiter not to put as much cheese on for you. So just say, you know, I want it with just a little bit of cheese. Another option, if you just want to go the whole hog and have the proper pizza, is to split it. So get a side salad and split the pizza or take half the pizza home and have it the next night with a full salad you know so you can always do that you want to be super healthy you can always forgo the cheese entirely now I think a lot of people kind of screw their face up when you say this but you would be surprised how tasty a pizza without cheese is especially if there's a little bit of pesto on the top and you have like olives and artichokes on there you'd be surprised how nice that is Italian desserts are so good but they're also great at making sorbet so I would maybe swap the tiramisu for a sorbet or something like that and Bob's your uncle. Mexican food, my personal favourite. I would eat Mexican food every day. I usually make it at home because truth be told England does not have that many great Mexican restaurants. Nachos are like my one true love. I adore them but I like to make them at home and the reason that I like to make them at home is because I like to use healthier chips. I've Instagrammed them loads of times they're like um, blue maize. Um, I like to use those ones because they don't have as much salt on as well. Avocados are great for you. Guacamole you can make really healthy at home. I always replace my sour cream with Greek yogurt. So those are the kind of ways that I make it a little bit healthier and I don't add as much cheese. But obviously in a restaurant they're going to be kind of laden with all kinds of things. So just weigh up whether you could satisfy your nachos craving at home another night and whether you might want to choose a different starter. Again the drink comes into play here because it's nothing like a margarita or an ice cold beer with lime to wash down Mexican food but just bear that in mind. Probably one of the best options you can go for in a Mexican, avoid anything like fried, refried. Um, but one of the best options that you can go for is something like fajitas where you can make it yourself and you can... can add what you want and you've got lots of vegetables um, and some sort of lean protein so you could get like chicken fajitas or I personally just get vegetable fajitas. The only thing you need to be careful of with the fajita option is the number of wraps because at some restaurants I've been to you get like six bloody wraps in the thing and you would never eat that many at home um, so maybe just ask the waiter for you know two or three wraps or two or maybe if you want to be super super healthy just don't have any of the wraps at all and just have the chicken and the vegetables and the different sauces and flavours and get a side salad. You can kind of adapt things in that way. If you go to somewhere like Chipotle or Tortilla or any of those kind of places there, you know, the burrito type places that you can get food really quickly from, then I always go for like the black beans or again if you go for some sort of lean protein that would be good too and I would personally sway you towards a burrito bowl. Don't get me wrong, I love a good burrito and I do eat burritos but if I was trying to be super healthy I would get a burrito bowl because you tend to get a lot of lettuce in there and you're not so heavy on the rice, you can kind of dictate and I just feel like avoiding the wrap and avoiding so much rice you can just focus on the beans and the salad and the toppings.
we all like the toppings. I hope you found this video helpful. I know it was a long one, I know, but I wanted to try and make it comprehensive and as informative as possible. Don't forget to check out the corresponding post if you want to catch up on anything that you might have missed in this video and you can download the PDF and put it on your smartphone so you've got it when you're out and about. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!